calendar. How long are you going to be over there for? <laughs> It just happens to I'll oh, fall on a Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. He called me out and asked me to excuse him. It wouldn't be all three meetings, but study session. Study session is done. Study session. I won't miss a study session because that would be April 4th, right? You can't miss anything. Yeah, we'll just. Yeah, I'm too chicken. Oh, I'll be any worry. You do it, man. You got it. All right. Good evening. We will now call the uh, March 3rd, 2020 study session to order. And the clerk has already taken roll. Uh, Councilmember Wood called me today. He's out of town, so he's excused. Uh, item number three, presentation from the Yelm Timberland Library, uh, Erica McCallum. Thank you. All right, good evening. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to uh, let me talk for a few minutes. I will not take up too much of your busy time. Um, first, I just wanted to introduce myself. My name is Erica McCaleb, and I am the manager at the Yelm branch of the Timberland Regional Library here in town. Um, I am fairly new to the job. I am here, um, it's my 10th month, um, like two days ago. So um, I'm excited to have the opportunity to come talk to you today. Um, so besides um, introducing myself, I just wanted to take a few minutes to give an update uh, about what the library has been up to, kind of an overview of 2019, and then some updates and looking forward um, to the future of what we're planning on doing. Um, so I thought I'd start with what else, some statistics. Um, so 2019, we um, circulated about 175,000 physical materials. So that's books, um, CDs, DVDs, anything that you can physically go into the library and pick up, including our special collections like music devices or light therapy lamps, um, assistive technology devices, <coughs> things like that. Um, additionally, we also had about um, 37,000 um, online resources that circulated through our OverDrive platform, so the things like audiobooks and ebooks. Um, so in 2019, we ended with 27,000 registered card holders. 3,800 of those were new card holders, so people that had never had a library card getting their card for the first time. Um, in addition to the core services that we provide in the branch, we also really prioritize outreach to our community. Um, so we really prioritize going to places like assisted living facilities, whether that's um, Rosemont or East Haven, Sophie's Choice. Um, we also try to go out to the school districts, whether that's here in Yelm or out in Rainier. Um, we also do um, CMAR. We try to participate in public events like the uh, Christmas in the Park, Northwest Biking Fest, um, Food Prosperity Central, TRL, um, Homeschoolers, Open House, any event that um, is interested in having the library come out and provide books that people can check out or information on resources. Um, we also try and partner um, as much as possible. So some of our most impactful work, I believe, is done um, in partnership with Yelm Community Schools, South Sound YMCA, and South Puget Sound Community College. Um, the two big projects that we have worked on um, with those partners are um, the High School Plus program, which has graduated 60 graduates in the past year and a half. These are folks 18 plus that are getting their high school diploma. Um, maybe for some reason they dropped out of school or weren't unable to complete their education going back and getting their high school diploma. Um, and then just recently, in the past couple of months, um, ESL program at um, the Yelm Extension School, which currently has, um, it's in its first quarter with 19 students. Um, some um, library in the news, a couple of articles fairly recently, December 23rd, um, was an article about um, Timberland Regional Library um, cutting out um, late fees for overdue library materials. As long as you return that um, material back to us, we're not going to charge you a late fee for it. This was a barrier for a lot of people, um, kind of contrary to the popular belief, well, what will keep people from just keeping books? Well, if you keep it, you're going to be paying us for a new, for a new book. 
um, but that has really um, been such a help to so many people. We've actually gotten things that have, you know, might have been missing for a couple years, finding their way back to the library, which is fantastic. Um, and then in February, we also had a profile on a formal, former council, uh, council member, um, Mike McGowan. He's celebrating 25 years at the Yelm Timberland Library. Um, and that was Yelm Librarian has been helping patrons find what they need for a quarter century. Um, so looking forward to the future, some things that we are focused on, um, census, we are a partner um, to um, have people fill out the census to get everybody counted. Um, so March 12th is a self-response period that opens. You can um, respond online. Every Timberland Regional Library has a Get Counted Center at their library that has information on how to fill out the census, as well as all of our staff are able to answer some basic questions around the census. So if somebody needs internet access to fill that out um, before getting you know, a paper one in the mail or having somebody knock on their door, they can come to the public library. We will be closing our um, Yelm Multicultural Festival March 21st um, at the Yelm Community Center from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, this is a free community event, um, so anybody that can attend, we'd love to see you there. Um, if you know people that are interested in attending, please send them over. Um, summer Library Program, this is our biggest program throughout the year. Um, kids are out of school, you kind of need uh, some free things to keep them occupied. Um, or if you're an adult and you're like, huh, I want something to do as well. We also are having a more robust adult um, summer library program this year as well. That runs roughly June through July. Um, some changes for that is we are going to be utilizing the Young Community Center for a couple of our largest programs. Uh, Jeff Evans, the magician and son of the reptile man. If you have ever tried to go to the library during one of those two days, I'm so sorry you're our downstairs neighbor. <laughs> um, there is a lot of people um, that attend those programs. So having a nice big space, maybe the reptiles don't feel as uh, claustrophobic as they might uh, in, our, in our meeting room. So we're going to be um, expanding that to um, over here at the community center, as well as working with the Rainier School District to have some of those programs out in their area as well, because transportation can be a little difficult for people that um, live out that way. Um, I also had a fantastic opportunity um, for the Thurston County Commissioners today. My library director did a great presentation. Um, she's much more eloquent than I am, but I did want to, uh, you know, steal a couple tidbits from her um, presentation presentation this afternoon. Um, so a couple of her 2019 highlights included um, a new service that we added um, called Canopy Movie Streaming. This is about 30,000 movies, no wait periods. You can stream it directly uh, to your TV or to your computer. Um, and there's no wait, so that's a new service that we just added in the past year. Um, and I also wanted to just briefly touch on a couple of the core areas that we are focusing on for our 2020-2022 strategic direc direction. Local communities, equity, diversity, and inclusion, children from birth to five. Those are our three focal points um, for the next three or so years. Um, we also added um, a partnership with the Washington Assistive Technology Act program. These are um, assisted technology devices that are available to be checked out in the areas of daily living aids, communication assistant, assistance aids, computer access devices, leisure tools, reading and writing tools, um, really with the idea that folks will be able to um, try out these very specialized devices before they go out and purchase them. So anything from large magnifiers to a handy <coughs> tool that's able to slip on your socks in the morning. Um, we have those available for people to check out. We also, um, all Timberland Regional Libraries are um, certified work source connection sites. So people looking for um, work, looking for training, high school diplomas, assistance to train staff, um, learning English as a second language, small business owners, people look, looking for apprenticeship, apprenticeships, work experiences, and um, other um, things of that nature. 
Um, we have a warm handoff procedure, so if you come in and you're looking for a job, of course we'll help you get started on your resume, but we also have somebody at a local work source site, um, a supervisor that we can reach out directly and say, hey, this person, here's their name, this is what they're needing to do, please get in contact with them, instead of just being like, oh, have you talked to WorkSource yet? And giving them a telephone number. It's a little more personalized service than that. All right. That was everything um, that I had for you today, but of course, if you have any question, I'd, questions, I'd love to hear them. Yes. Um, last time we had a Timberland Regional Library present, they were talking about uh, people using the library and that Yelm was the only one that was growing out of all the libraries in the area. Is that still true? How's our numbers in terms of people using the library? Mm -hmm. So we, um, we definitely have a outsized percentage of people um, whenever we're looking at the number of checkouts that we have or how many people are coming into the library, especially if you look at the summer library program statistics, I think we're number three. This is out of 27 libraries and put Pizza, Southern Olympia, Lacey, Tumwater, kind of the larger communities. So yes, I still believe that is true. Um, for our size uh, compared to kind of our, I guess they're like the third tier libraries, which are the largest, we definitely are right up there with performance, especially in terms of checkouts and participation in, um, in programs. And we're still growing, correct? Mm -hmm. We're not sure. okay. Yeah. How are you guys doing for space, physical space? Um, <coughs> it is, um, it's a challenge. Um, so our space is fairly, um, and flexible, and um, it, it does get fairly crowded. Um, so, for example, we're getting some new computer tables and a new color um, copier, so I have to sit down and kind of like, where are we going to put everything? Um, so it's a challenge, I won't lie. Um, we, um, we sometimes struggle to fit everything that we want to fit um, inside our space. We're gonna have a new tool library and some of the things that I'd love to have, like a push mower and things like that, I just, I, I, I can't find the space to put those um, in the library, so it goes on to the next one. Yeah, well, plus you're on the second floor. Yeah, and we can't, yeah. Equipment out like that would be a little Yeah, weird. and we do have, you know, storage space, so it's on the second floor, and then you go up a couple of flights to a storage space. Well, I'm not gonna be sending people that are, you know, working at, a, at the checkout desk to run up the stairs and then run back down to get things. So it's, it can be a little challenging to figure out where everything goes. Um, that is one of the reasons that we're trying to kind of do more of our larger programs off-site. Um, we do have some fire code, um, you know, restrictions that I will say stretched not broken um, during the summer months because, you know, if we have a program that attracts 300 people and fire code says 167, we gotta figure out a way to accommodate those extra people. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could expand, expand a little bit on the streaming services. Mm -hmm. How, um, you said it's a new service a year ago? Yes. Is it pretty popular? Are people starting to use it more than mm -hmm. um, print or CDs or DVDs? <laughs> Um, so in this area, um, I wouldn't say so because a lot of times we'll strike up the conversation at the checkout desk and be like, oh, do you like movies? We see you're getting a lot of DVDs. Have you heard about this new streaming service? And then we ask, how's your internet connection? Not so great for a lot of folks out here that maybe live in a more rural area. Um, so Are you finding a lot of people coming in or, or living outside the city limits just because of poor internet quality usually? Um, so yeah, we have a rather large um, service area, so it definitely expands out past um, the city limits. So with 27 card holders, that's obviously, or 27,000 card holders, that's quite a bit more than city limits of Yelm. Um, so yeah, we have people that, um, you know, Bold Hills area especially, and um, yeah, so a, a fair bit, um, but yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. One last question. Um, I noticed, and I mean everybody's seen this, the last 30 years libraries have kind of gone out of existence <coughs> because of efficient technology. And I know you said you're getting more computer desks. Are you seeing a shift or are you doing more of a shift into computer information? Because I know a lot of people go there. I mean, whenever I go there, I see the computers are always full and there's always a wait for the computers. Has that become more of your mainstay as the computer type of stuff or is this 175 on par with what you've been doing in the past? Um, so a little context to that. So for the physical materials, you will see a decline. You know, I think last year it was maybe 176,000. Um, so 
Um, from 2018 to 2019, the circulation of physical materials was about down about 2,000. Um, in the same time span for the overdrive collection, which is our online resources, it gained um, 7,000 circulations. So you have a net gain of net gain of about 5,000 if you're adding together your physical and your online circulation together. So um, overall, it's increasing or staying about the same, but you do see a, a kind of a gradual decline in the physical, and but that is being made up plus some with the online materials. Are you seeing more people? Um, <coughs> is the curve going up for the new library, um, new library cards, and new uh, new members? Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, um, there is some, um, the figures look a little strange because we, um, in the past, I believe it was 2018, we rolled out something called MyTRL, which was every kid that was in um, the school systems in Thurston County got a um, kind of like an online card. So you saw this big increase in um, in library cards. But that wasn't necessarily the kids coming in to get the cards. It was kind of automatically generated with information that we received from the school system in partnership. So even if they never came into our physical space, they still got all the access to the online databases and things like that for their homework help and other things. Um, so besides that kind of that one time, like 10,000 new people, um, a lot of that was from our school system. So yes, it continues to increase for the new library cards. Anything else? Thank you. I do enjoy the kids coming from June till whenever, even if it's hard for me to park. But yes. there's a lot of kids and a lot of families going. It's really nice to see. And it seems like it gets bigger and bigger every year. So yeah. I know it's super busy for you guys. So. Yeah, sorry for all the upstairs. Like It doesn't bother you. It's kind of nice. But it's nice. Kids' noise is always nice. Refreshing. Keeps you awake, right, Ted? Yeah. <laughs> Unless I'd be napping back there. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we'll have the Water Reclamation Facility Phase 2 presentation. Are you ready for it? I think so. <laughs> All right. I apologize. I have to run. Um, can you email me this presentation? Okay, we're I appreciate it.
two, uh, two of our SBR units. Um, we, I know we already really close on hitting like nitrate levels and other levels. Are we gonna be hitting those levels when we drop down to two or are those gonna be, are we gonna have to get like a permit to be able to exceed some stuff or hold stuff? How's that gonna work since we're already in some cases exceeding what we're supposed to be doing? That's a really good question. Um, so in thinking through the phasing that we came up with for this, we know that we have to meet, meet permit the whole way through this. Um, we know that ecology is gonna hold us to that. So what we're planning to do is we're not dropping down to two, two basins until we actually have the MBR running. So we're gonna to continue to operate in three basin mode until we have the first, first round of MBR tanks for that first 10 years in place. And then we're gonna to begin to modify the process in two, two of those SBR tanks, but we're gonna convert those to um, a biologic, more of a biological continuous flow process than a batch process, which is the way the plant operates today. So we're gonna change that operation, but we're not gonna do it until we're ready with the new treatment technology to basically enhance that. How long does that take to switch over? I can't um, imagine you just... Yeah, it, well, it's a biological process, and so um, if you remember, Doug, who was with me last week, was talking a lot about bugs and keeping the bugs happy, and that process can take a couple of weeks sometimes. And so what we'll, we'll be doing is, is trying to enhance that at the beginning through the startup process um, and getting those bugs, yeah. <laughs> Here I am in front of the camera. Um, <laughs> it, it takes a little bit of time, and we build that into the startup process. So we're gonna we're gonna make really sure that we are able to run in batch mode and three basin mode as long as we can, and we may end up kind of slowly beginning that process in what we're, we're calling a semi-continuous operation, semi-batch mode, in order to increase what we call the mixed liquor concentration, which is basically the number of bugs that are there to help us to, to, ex, to meet that biological process. And those numbers won't be, um, the numbers required from the state, it won't be impacted within that <clears throat> for the month? Do they check like every week or every month or every couple months? We're going to be monitoring it and we're going to do everything we can to maintain the permit conditions that need to be met. I mean, today, today things happen because, it, because the wastewater stream is not a, um, it's predictable, but it's not always the same. And so that's the, there's an art to running these facilities as well. They don't just, you don't just turn them on and they go. So as the biological and chemical constituents change with the wastewater, you kind of have to adapt. But we'll do our best as we can to, to maintain and meet permit during that process. And one last question, sorry. So this is all during the first option, correct? This is under the option first 3A, yes. Should this be the one that the council chooses and all that? Will there be any disruption for the consumers during this process at all? There should be none. Perfect. Thank you. Looking at some of the benefits of uh, option 3A, maybe I should have put happy bugs down. <laughs> but, <laughs> anyway, outside of having a higher water uh, quality and more uh, capacity within the system and upgrading until for, for permit compliance and addressing, addressing necessary capacity needs, uh, you will be getting a new plant. And with that new plant, you will be getting a uh, new chemical feed building, uh, control building expansion, new process mechanical and electrical, uh, an ultraviolet disinfection system, and new plant pump stations, and new electrical and plant SCADA systems. But you will also be utilizing many of the existing facilities that we do have there, even though they'll be improved and, and, and made, made ready. So, having said this, let's get into uh, talking about potential funding sources. When you fund a project, especially something of this magnitude, there are really basically three sources of funds that you have available to you. You've got, or actually four or five actually, but 
You've got your city funds, and typically that's made up of the uh, CIP uh, money you've set aside, and then you have know, made that over the years. You have some reserves, and you do have your existing rates that uh, help uh, pay for the system. In addition to that, you also have grants and loans. Highlighted in blue, uh, for example, are the grants. We have the Department of Ecology has a Centennial uh, Clean Water uh, Fund grant, uh, which on that, we could probably get as much as five million dollars maximum. The Department of uh, Commerce has its uh, Community e Economic Development Revitalization uh, Board uh, grants, uh, and that's in the range of uh, two to three million dollars. And then in red, uh, there are various loans uh, and opportunities to get loans, low interest rate loans, to uh, help fund the project, whether it be the, uh, <coughs> States, the Department of Agriculture Rural Development. Grant for cities of underpopulation, and, and right now uh, uh, the city of Yelm is just under you know 10,000 people, so we meet that threshold, but we got to uh, move that. Uh, the Public Works Board, uh, low interest loans uh, through the Public Works Board and the Department of Commerce, a two percent loan uh, depending on local match and and, and why not. Uh, Department of Ecology is water quality combined funding, a two percent. And the Rural Community Assistance uh, Corporation uh, loans are available. But in addition to that, there are things that the city can do to work with its legislative uh, representatives, both in the state and the federal level, to get earmarked funding for the project <coughs> or include that as part of the budget. When you get loans, you have to pay them back. Grants, you don't have to pay back. Earmark funds you don't have to pay back. Money that you set up aside on the things you don't have to pay back because you've already put that in, in house. So this is going to be part of the challenge on this thing, on this particular project, that we're going to have to work very hard to move forward to get all the necessary funding that we uh, have for this project uh, and, and get it ready. So that, but the key thing is you need to be shovel ready. If you're not shovel ready, really are not in a position to convince the lending and the uh, grant agencies that you're in a position ready to go. People don't want to fund studies. They want to see results and they want to see that this facility is built on a timely basis and they, they know it's going to be built and, uh, and they're willing to do that. Um, anyway, so having said that, here's a possible scenario. Is it the only scenario? No, there are many scenarios, but I just kind of wanted to kind of highlight and say that this is a potential scenario, but it's not the only one, and uh, it may not be the most viable one either, depending on you know how much money that uh, we can put together. So we've got an estimated cost of uh, the option here, $22.2 million. Currently right now in blue, identified here, we have the city sewer CIP. We currently have $2 million set aside to move forward with this project. What this means is with that $2 million, we can move forward with the design phase of the project and become shovel ready. <coughs> Secondly, we also have an existing public works trust fund loan uh, for the public works board for $1 million. That is a loan. It's a point. Eight tenths of one, well, it's eight tenths of one percent, but it's a five-year loan. Okay, and I think if you're looking at long-term money and, and whatnot, you probably want to be looking for at least a minimum of twenty years. Uh, you could go thirty years, but then you're paying more in your principal, and and, 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 and or you're not paying on the principal; you're paying on the interest. Uh, so, assuming we have that three million dollars then reasonably, okay, if we can get a CERB grant, uh, $3 million, if we work with the, the agencies and do that, then a DOE grant of $5 million, that leaves us uh, you know, with a gap of somewhere in the air of about $11.2 million, of which loans from the Public Works Board or the USDA could approximately be $10 million, leaving $1.2 million that we've got to figure out how to, how to pay for that. Well, as I said earlier, if we can, you know, work with our legislative representatives, both at the federal level and also at the state level, and reduce our 
own liability, so to speak, then that uh, certainly puts us in a far better position to move forward with the project. My point is, is that as we move forward <coughs> in the design phase, we start and if we're going to bring it back to the uh, the council on the, on the, uh, the 10th of the engineering contract, move forward with the design. And that'll be uh, completed by the end of the first quarter of uh, 2021. That gives the city you know, a year to work with the representatives and the, and the staff to work with the grant agencies to get and start pulling all these funds together so that we, when we are have those funds together, we will be shovel ready, we'll be in a good position, and we can move forward with this uh, particular project. So, the next steps uh, following this evening are simply this. The PSA uh, for the design engineer will be presented to the council on the 10th. In April, we'll begin the, uh, the design phase if you so elect to uh, move forward with the project. And one of the things that uh, we can do, and we've scheduled this meeting in, uh, in April, and actually it's going to take place on the 22nd of, of April, as we meet with all of these agents, the agencies that come together the funding sources, it's called the Infrastructure Assistance Coordinating Council. It's comprised of the Department of Health, uh, the Department of uh, Ecology, the Public Works uh, Board, the Department of Commerce, uh, CERB, Community uh, Economic Revitalization Board, the USDA, Rural Community Assistance Corporation. All of these groups come together and they meet with the city and they talk about the project and they, they're going to ask, you know, are you seriously you know, moving forward with this thing? And, 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 and these are the funds that we can help you put together to you know, help build this project. So that's something that certainly the, the you know, Public Works uh, uh, Committee and, and the Council and, and whatnot are, are certainly encouraged to come and, and hear and participate in the, this process because, once again, we're all working on the, the same objective. Your staff is working with you to make this project into a reality once again. So that's the April. Now, in May, once we have this information and we get the information from the uh, Assistance Coordinating Council, we will have some input into a rate model. We, we already had a rate model that was done in 2017. And we've updated the rates uh, up till basically I think in 2019 and then 2020 and then after that uh, the rates in the city are tied to the consumer price index. But we can pull it together and play what if scenarios on the rate model. Say, well, if we borrow this money, if we get this grant, we have this loan, we have this, and we pull these things together, we can see what the impact would be potentially on rates. Whether they need to go up or they stay the same, I don't know. And I'm not going to speculate one way or the other because I'm engaged in the process. Okay. Well, I was wondering. You go back a couple slides to the funding, all the different fundings, like the 5% or whatever. In a perfect world, if we got every single grant, were those the max amounts that you were listing up there? So those are max, well, the maximum amount that the Department of Ecology uh, would give would be $5, or $5 million under, under that particular program. Under the SERB uh, program, it would be the maximum would be $3 million under that program. So we're... Those are the existing programs. Sure. So we're looking right now at the best possible scenario where we get not only the we get granted the, the awards and the grants, but we also get the maximum amount that they can award. Mm -hmm. Is that accurate? Yeah. Uh, and I think it's doable. And and under that um, under that model, funding model, we would not have to raise any rates if we got it. Not at all. Oh, excuse me. I, th I thought that paid for all of them without. No. No. You got loans. You have to pay. Sure. Sure. Money. I get the loan part. Um, you wouldn't have to pay back grants, but you would have to pay back loans. Sure, and so you're saying that we'd have to do the rate increase to pay for the loans then? I'm not saying you have to do a rate increase. Don't, don't confuse me. I understand your position that I, I, you don't want to raise rates. Sure. Uh, but I'm not here to tell you that you have to raise rates or you have you know, things are going to be hunky-dory. I'm not asking for you to tell me. I'm just asking what are the possibilities and what, are, what options we would have to raise the rates. That's all I'm asking. Well, if asked me to speculate, but, uh, you know, hey, what the heck, I'm the interim public works director, I can speculate all I want. Well, you're speculating on about $22 million of our dollars here, so, I mean, it's pretty high risk. As I, point, as I pointed out, um, for example, 
you've got $10 million worth of, uh, of, of loans. Mm -hmm. If you were to supplement that $10 million with earmarked funds from the state, that's money you don't have to pay back. But it's unlikely we're going to get $10 million from that. Well, would you ask for $10 million, if you no, I wouldn't, because we wouldn't, wouldn't get ask, it. You wouldn't ask for... No, in the last couple state capital budgets, I mean, they're getting awarded less than $3 million a pop. So it would no, be kind of no, you, a similar I'm project. Saying, I'm saying legislatively, if you ask your federal and your state legislators to earmark in their budgets, set aside $5 million or $10 million for, the, for this particular project, and you're successful, that would mean you would not have to borrow a uh, potential public works board or no, uh, I, I, loans. I, I get that, but what I'm saying, the reality of it is, those they don't get awarded for that much. If you look in the past history for different capital budgets, it's very rare that there's a um, water reclamation plant, and they do. They do often award money for um, similar projects to this, but not in that amount. Um, I, I, I mean, I like what you're doing here, though. I, I like the, the route you're taking. I'm just saying that... I, I don't think we're going to get ten million or even five million in state capital funding. Well, see, I always think that the glass is a little half fuller, you know. Than I always look at it half empty. <laughs> I, you know, I've been at it for you know forty years, and I've seen I've seen strange things happen. And I sure. I mean, in my career, I've, I've pulled in somewhere in the order of fifty million dollars, and one of the ways I did it is you know I, I talked to Patty Murray and her group and Maria Cantwell and her group and gone down to the legislature and we talked to their their group and we were successful in, in funding uh, you know some some serious uh, you know capital construction projects so I hope it I hope you're right well I'll be I think, optimistic I think, I think if if the you know, this is the challenge and one of the things that this year city council is going to have to do and, and, and public works committee is going to have to do is make the request and make the case so, you know, put on your happy face and go make the case. <laughs> you can't get it if you don't ask. If you don't ask. You don't go say, well, geez, I need, you know, three million or two million or, you know, I need ten million. I mean, you know, you, there's a laugh factor associated with it. But you got to, you know, I think coming together with these, these different groups, you'll kind of find out, you know, really where, what's going on. And But I think there's also support in the Department of Ecology, and we've worked, we've worked very closely with the Department of Ecology through current operation and they know that they want to have this system going so they're going to you know bend over backwards really to help the city you know move forward with this thing so I think that's a plus that a lot of cities just don't have uh, you know, working for them at this point uh, the success of the first plant and the the product that you put out and why it was being reclaimed was the first in the state it was successful it's reached its limits now you can be successful in doing something else and still putting water back into the into the ground the system by having a better you know treatment facility and, and moving that legacy forward. So, um, so having said that, uh, yeah, you you, you you kind of took the wind out of my sails there, but uh, you know between May and December, then the council and the staff are going to have to work together to uh, secure those funds. And uh, when, when we do, then, you know, obviously, then we can, you know, go out and bid and make work that bid. And it gives us a good solid year to do that. Sure. But the bottom line is, if you don't move forward and get the thing shoveled ready with the design engineering on the project, then uh, your chances are, are going to be negligible, or less than if you were shoveled ready. Please. Um, yes, just a quick look. If we decide to vote, because we vote next week, on this, the design phase. If we choose the design phase, we're essentially locked in the option because that design will only cover that one option, correct? When we come up for a vote once the design's complete. So like we, if in this scenario, option 3A, we go, let's move forward and design option 3A. And then a year from now, we're like, you know what? Holy crud, we just had the census back where our population's 15,000. I know this is ridiculous. Our population is 15,000. We should probably go to 3B because we need a bigger area or bigger facility or something. We need to change how we're doing our option. And the design goes, well, the design doesn't cover that. So, like, I, does it lock us in when we make the vote next week for the design well, that we have to design phase? What you need to is that doing 3A, just because we happen to do one on the side, doesn't mean we need to have more room or more property to expand the system. You put it in operation and you can utilize existing facilities, 
But those facilities can be expanded on the existing site to accommodate not only 20, 25. But you've got room on the site to expand that facility to go beyond that point. It's just you don't need to do it. And what I think the point is brought up, well, when do we have to start putting the 2045 facilities online? Well, you're going to have to monitor growth and development in, in, in doing that. And so you, what we're doing is we're, we're putting what you need to have for your existing population and to allow it to accommodate for you know, future growth of a conservative amount, but it's still a large enough amount that you know give you time that if you need to expand, you, you still have time to be able to do that planning and, and move forward with that. So it's properly sized, I think, at the uh, 1.29 million gallons initially, and then you can move forward as you have things move forward. But I'm just saying it does lock us in, though. Next week, if we go, let's vote 3A. We're locked into 3A next year when we vote on it. Like that'll be the option we'll have to move forward to uh, next year. That we vote. That'll be the option we design. We can only we can we can only have funds to design only one. You got one shot at this. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I just want to make sure so we don't like in a year when we vote to actually fund this project. Yeah, we, we go. Can. We need to find the fund. We need to move the rate increase yeah, or whatever. We got to fund the three A. We, we can't change and go. You know what? Actually, let's go with one A or three B at that point. Well, we we're just, we have to redesign everything all over. So yeah, gotcha. But that design doesn't become obsolete. Like say we don't get the funding in the grants. And it takes longer to do. It's still a good system, a good design. Well, that you would recommend you know, I, in the long term. It's, a, it's certainly a tough nut to hope, a road to hope. But uh, let's say you don't get the funding. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a downside to that. You have to keep managing the existing system you have, and you're still going to be out of compliance. And then. The worst case scenario, and I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but uh, if you don't have the capacity, you can't grow. And that probably would limit your future plans for, you know, growth and development. So we would just hold on that plan, but once we got funding, we would be shovel ready if we went ahead with shovel, the Once you get the design ready, you're, yeah. you're shovel ready. At any time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I know for me, I'm going to have some questions next week regarding specifics on the loans that we're applying for, like what type of interest rates we're looking for um, at different, let's say at $5 million, $7 million, $10 million, just for purposes in the future, possible rate increases, how much it would cost us, um, how much to... Well, I think, I think you're getting a little ahead of the game here. Next week's the vote, isn't it? We're approving just the design, though. Just the design. No rate increases, no sure. funding for the actual plan. We're not making decisions with respect to rates or percentages or whatever it is. Uh, you know, that's something that uh, we got to take the information uh, to and uh, what, what's available. And certainly after we meet with the funding agencies, is uh, sit down and uh, you know, plug that information in and see what the potential impact may or may not be. And what it would be to you know, reduce rates or... Sure. Where your rates fall with respect to you know other communities and things like that. I mean that's half the funding source though. You're the projected. Yeah, absolutely. But I don't think with interest rates going up and down right now, we can't. You could we could pick three percent or two percent. They just dropped today. I don't sure. think it's. Sure. We could guess all day long and never have any idea what it's going to be in a year or two years. Sure, but it, I mean, I'm doubting it's going to change more than a couple percents, if that, or points. I mean, we could get a ballpark average of what it would cost us, like if it's going to be 100000 a year, well, 200 or 200 you know, this evening, I mean, if you're looking at a public works board loan uh, or public trust fund loan, you're probably looking at uh, you know, 2%. You can go less if you want to go a 30-year loan. I assume 2% at a 20-year loan. That's, that's their stated uh, loan. Uh, CERB or USDA, they're even the, uh, the Department of Ecology uh, has loans that you can get, and they're tied to, uh, you know, what the, what the, what the, uh, the bond rates are. And uh, so they, they fluctuate down, and, and you know this week things are fluctuating up and down you know, quite a bit. So you know, there's, there's general information out there. We can certainly provide you the sheet with all the funding sources and all that that, uh, you know, has <coughs> today what the, those interest rates are. And that's what I try to capture on the <coughs> summary here. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, taking all that information and you know, pulling it together and then creating the, uh, you know, uh, the tables that you need to have to create models and to see, uh, you know, how these things can be paid for, whether it's, you know, loans, and you could find out maybe, maybe 
you could comfortably do it for less loans, and uh, or you could comfortably do it for more loans, and or you may have to, you know, seek other additional funding, uh, earmark funds from the state legislature to help offset that. Sure. Uh, that's that, that's the purpose of sitting down with the rate model, and that's where the public works committee needs to work with the staff to be able to do that and make a recommendation to the, the council as a whole of how you'd like to. I think you're, let's go ahead, Sergeant. Um, as far, I, I don't, I'm not sure how much more slides you have, um, but if you go, the one, is it 3A that we're talking about right now? Um, when I was looking them over, since I missed the last meeting about this specifically, I looked them over. 3A is the one that made sense to me. Um, I don't see why it would make any sense to purchase more property, build a new facility there especially if we can do with what we have right now. Um, the biggest problem I that I see that's going to probably come up is, so it says $22 million right there, 22.2, .2, but that also was only supposed to be 460 and it ended up over a million. So is this going to end up over 45? Okay. What, what, happens when the, what happens when the contractors... Have when these delays out of nowhere? Are we ho holding them to the con contracts? Or? Let me say that you are involved in a process here. Yeah, I, I understand and, what we're and, talking and about right now. Really, just the plan. Really, the twenty-two million dollar, twenty-two point two million dollars, is a planning level cost estimate. It's based upon current bid prices. It's based upon the knowledge of the systems and putting together all the bits and pieces and, and, and estimating it. That number is, you, you put a higher, much higher contingency on it uh, to, uh, uh, you know, at that at plan level, because there's a lot you don't know as far as the design and things like that. When you get into the design phase and you start, you know, quantifying how much concrete, how much steel, how big are the pumps, the availability of the pumps, uh, the systems, and all the other bits and pieces as you go through that, then you've got some, you can get some more definition to get better prices, and that'll give you better prices and, and then you can reduce your contingencies because you've got more information with which to make base 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 that decision. Now there's not to say that things as you go through the design phase could come up but that you know hopefully maybe it's less maybe it maybe it'll be a little bit more. I don't think it's gonna be you know a gazillion dollars more like what you're talking about. But once you even have the engineering cost estimate on the thing, and then this is kind of the, the tricky wicket of any public works director standing before the council is that you want to guarantee you're going to stay you know, within a price. Well, okay, you, you've done your due diligence. You, you started off with a planning level, you, you come up with a design, you come up with a cost estimate, you do it, guess what? Now you've got to put it out to bid. And the contractor may see something completely different uh, than how you want to do it, and maybe you know the, there's enough work going around that you know people are you know keeping really busy and they don't have want to you know waste their time doing the project, or not, or you're in a recession and people are hungry for work. Those are all variables, you know, in terms of or gasoline prices, you know, shooting up, whatever. The contractor is going to give you a bid, and that bid may be right at the engineer's cost estimate, or it might be less, or it might be more. And at that point, the council is going to have to decide, well, if it's more, are we really going to put this thing out and move forward, or are we going to rebid this thing or, or do this? But before we even put the project out to bid, we're going to sit down and, and, and the engineer is going to look at this thing, and they're going to go through a process which is called value engineering, is to have some of the other people look at this thing and find out, you know, there are things that are part of the systems and things like this that we could change, tweak, whatever it is, that are redundant or not necessary or that we can come up with a better approach that will, you know, add, ask for cost savings. So the, the part of putting that package together, and that, that's typically all done in the design phase, and that's, that's where, you know, your staff is going to be communicating with you to keep you guys in the loop about what's going on in this thing. So there's no hidden surprises as you go through this whole process. Your staff, and we are working together to and this has got to be a transparent, uh, you know, working relationship that we have with the council, because otherwise, without it, 
it just didn't get a lot of money. And then we also recognize that you're working with your constituents too, and we know that you know there's just other things associated with that that we've got to make it work for everybody. Hopefully I've answered your question. It's kind of a long-winded one. I apologize. Oh, you're good. I know what I'm talking about is further on than what we're talking about right now anyway. Um, it's just, that's just a concern I'm going to have because it, it's pretty, pretty standard, especially with anything that has to do with a government contract. You get a bid, and obviously this isn't parametrics, this isn't your fault. You'll get a bid from a contractor, they'll start work on it, and all of a sudden there's, oh, X, Y, Z pops up now instead of $5 million, it's going to be seventeen. Well, sometimes it gets pretty darn spooky. Uh, you, you, know, you, you know, I've seen projects, fortunately none of mine, where you have a good planning level estimate, you have a good engineering estimate, you got a good bid, and then the contractor has got his attorneys looking at it, oh, we can sue the city for a delay claim because they didn't put this in the specifications. Next thing you know, you got to, you know, I mean, look at uh, look what was going on with the pump project in Seattle. Yeah, we hit a pipe. Yeah, fifty million dollars, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's an educational process to say the least. So, Steve, what happens in a worst case scenario? If the city goes out of compliance altogether. I mean, do they just shut us down, or what? Ha what what happens? Uh, well, we talked about that before. Um, the good thing is that you have an excellent working relationship with the Department of Ecology. Bill and Pat have been working very closely uh, with them, and they know what's going on here, and they've been involved heavily in, uh, in the treatment system and in helping our system, you know, operate. They could potentially fine you, penalize you, they could send somebody to jail. I mean, that's that's what the Clean Water Act says. Um, they have done fines in the past for you know people or organizations that have been blatantly ignoring them. The city of Yelm is not blatantly ignoring anybody. You, you, this city is transparent with the Department of Ecology, so I'm not thinking that you're going to have to pay it, but. Nonetheless, if the levels keep exceeding, 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 and we're not able to do that, then that, that certainly is problematic. And I think that is certainly what we're trying to avoid here is to allow for that growth and allow, you saw the charts that we had in terms of when we've exceeded. And we constantly go fluctuate up down. You know, it's just part of the, part of the process. And, and it just has to do with, you know, the age of the system and, and uh, other factors that uh, are causing us to exceed that. But, uh, so with that, uh, we'll see you on the uh, the tenth with a uh, uh, an agreement to uh, please consider and, and uh, move forward your union and move forward and uh, get this thing uh, started for you. All right. Thank you. 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 Budget amendment. Yeah. So last week I gave you a high overview of basically the general fund. Today I'm distributing a summary that includes all the funds that have changes to them. Our next steps will be to um, provide a more detailed, a specific line item by line item list of what is changing. Cody? <laughs> And of course, as we do the, as we go through this budget process, we'll continue to routinely review in, in July and in November as we start our next budget process. So just a quick review of the major changes to the general fund in the revenue. In the revenue, we will or we were granted two awards that staff are proud of. So 
for loss prevention and employee wellness. We also made some corrections to the revenue accounts that were overestimated. As far as expenses go, so we have actually reviewed all of the various line items with a view of maintaining our required reserves. And so the numbers are solid and, and we can fund what's being asked for. With the police officer and public safety, they're requesting an additional officer to train overlapping while our next person retires to get them good and trained. They're also requesting an emergency management plan update and a traffic camera for Yelman First. We've corrected the parks employee budget. We've recognized the cash for the cash out of the retiring officer and as well as the city council wage increase that was adopted earlier in the budget season. We also accounted for some under, under budgeted items, the um, property and liability <coughs> coverage, utility services, and new to this report right now is the custodial receipts and disbursements. We get some pass through accounts that from the court and different places, impact fees that we then pass on to the agencies and we hadn't added that to the budget adjustment. <coughs> In the stormwater, they have added a Department of Ecology grant and reduced in expenditures the stormwater planning while adding a GSI mapping. Water expenditures, all of the changes were basically reallocation between different expense lines, just showing up the budget and putting the money where it's actually needing to be spent. In the sewer, they also reallocated some expense lines. They added, we added property and liability insurance and utility services to that fund as well. They also need an increase for sludge and septic disposal. City streets inclu included a provision for emergency response that includes staff time and some supplies. <coughs> for the Yom, <coughs> Community officer, or community school officer, the, we're expecting to get an additional twenty thousand dollars from Young Community Schools, and we'd like the authority to expend those funds with employees, employee wages. Would those go towards the um, um, SRO? So, in the transportation facilities, we right side and size the transportation impact fee revenue that we get, as well as added the transfers out to other funds that are required. Um, our, our, our IT, ERNR fund, uh, we right size the operating allocations. They had been double budgeted initially in the original budget. And also, we accounted for the final payment of VIAS, our financial software, and the video arraignment system to this fund. We also moved phone service management, so everybody's cell phone plan is now managed by our IT department. And we right sized some other expenditures, so the total change to this fund was a decrease of about $63,000. So our next steps is to provide that budget detail list that shows you all the changes in each line item that were being requested and made. And then just to continue to give you the regular updates through the budget cycle. Oops. So my recommendation is at the March 10th City Council meeting, we consider this proposal for adoption. Are there any questions I can answer? Just, just one. Um, the public works, the two of the employees that weren't accounted for, were, what fund did that go under? Did that go under the public works fund or general fund? It's in the fund? general fund and it's in the parks. Okay, so we moved it to general fund? Okay, thank well, you. They have always been in general fund. <coughs> we just added it back where it should have been initially. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Last I got a lot of math to do. <laughs> Cody's over there with his calculator teacher out here. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the mayor's report. And I don't have one. So, um, for council member initiatives, if we could keep it to new initiatives, I know we've been here and heard a lot of information. That would be super helpful. So, we can wrap it up and go. Um, I met up with Joshua Penner today, Mayor Horry. I met with him, talked with him for a bit. 
and we were kind of just talking about different things. Anyway, he uh, he mentioned that in Bonnie Lake, there's a new neighborhood going in, 10,000 new homes, about 35,000 people. Well, part of that was the developer had to build one of these water treatment facilities. Um, he said he was going to reach out to whoever and try to figure out maybe if we could go out and check that out to see what one of those looks like. Um, once I hear back, I'll message you guys and let you know. Um, the only initiative is I am working on something. There's been a lot of talk uh, among the council, at least about doing something with the fireworks. And so I have a, another option I'm working on. I don't want to disclose too much yet, but um, uh, the name is, I can't even remember the name. It had a cool name too. But there's going to be something coming, so just keep your ears peeled to keep the newspaper ready. An alternative to fireworks that is extremely awesome and will get people excited. So just be ready for that. Here. The only thing I have is actually good news about that. Um, the, this legislature is considering a bill, and I don't know the status of it right now. It might have died. But um, they were considering, and it was getting actual consideration for um, if we plan to change our laws or um, ordinances regarding fireworks. Normally, right now, it currently takes a year, but with this bill, it would you could do it overnight if you wanted to. So. Um, I don't know if it will play into your plans or not, but... Well, and what we're not doing is not fireworks. It's not a firework itself. No, not a display. It, may, it, it is a display. <laughs> just boiling stuff. <laughs> stuff. And that's all it I is. like. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just going to note that our JBLM afternoon is going to um, coincide with our EDC meeting, so... Yes. I'll let uh, Grant know that. Uh, that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Chair. Do you have Mike? Michael, have anything? Do you have anything? Oh, I, I do have the agenda just to hand out to you. It's an updated agenda for the JBLM tour, and I will give that to you. And then um, the only other thing that I just want folks to have, just in case folks are, are, are tracking the news and all the information out there with whatever we're calling it now, COVD-19. Uh, but there's the, it, is, it has been directed for, for all of us, rather than putting out our own information, just to keep referring people to the, the health department. So as, as you get questions, as we get questions, we're just pushing people to those sites and those resources. Wash your hands. Yeah. If you weren't already. Right. me. <laughs> yeah. If you weren't already. Right. Yeah. The booty turn. We're just done. I wanted to. Oh. Do it. Do it. Turn. <laughs> you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. <laughs> <laughs>